All right, guys, this week we're going to go over position, velocity, and acceleration graphs. So be prepared to be confused because even I get confused when I go over this stuff. So the most important thing when looking at these is they need to be in order just like this position on top, velocity, and then acceleration. And that comes from calculus derivatives, but since we're not doing anything with calculus, you don't need to worry about that specifically. Just know that they need to be in this order. So what we're looking at here is some object's position along a course of time, and then so its velocity and acceleration are also uh, coincident with that as well. So now we're gonna try and explain what this means. So obviously here we have it's zero right there. So the best way that I think of to look at position is something more of a start line like this. So, so think of it like we've got ourselves a little car here. Okay, so we've got ourselves a little car and we're at start. So anytime that there's this start spot, this is zero for position. So any change, any positive uh, position change, so anything that's gonna be on this side of the graph here is going to represent some type of positive or forward movement of the car. And so anytime that it crosses zero, the car is gonna be at the same spot that it was at the start. And then obviously anything negative is going to be back. So what we're looking at here, we have our position is starting at zero and then it's going to decrease. So that is the car going backwards. And then here, right here at this bottom point here is when it has reached the final spot as far back as it's going for that spot before it begins to come back to the start. So this right here, all from this spot right here is all moving backwards, so it's experiencing some negative shift position backwards. And then from here to here is increasing, but it's only going back to the zero. So it's created this motion right here. So then any time that we have a position that's positive is going to be some shift forward here. And then obviously when it gets its max, it comes back down. So Dr. Ricardo will have problems in which you need to assess the, whether the position has changed positively or negatively. So whether the position has increased or decreased from a set starting point. And so he'll have certain points along here and then you just assess where the position has changed from that certain point. So the next bit is on to velocity. So another way to think of velocity is speed. Though they're not interchangeable for our purposes, we can say that they are. So for velocity is just speed, which in comparison to acceleration, acceleration is a change in speed, which is one thing that I'll go over in one of the later lectures when we start dealing with some momentum and, and that stuff as well. So we could say that for velocity is a speed, whereas acceleration is a change in speed. Now, once you understand that concept, then we can go ahead and say that any time that velocity is constant, so any time we have an asymptote like this or where it's kind of flat, so something similar to this area on the on velocity, it's showing that there's a constant velocity. And since velocity is constant, there's no change in acceleration. So if you have a car, like, so let's say this car here is going 60 miles an hour on the highway and you have the cruise control set. <laughs> Doesn't look like a car at all, but <laughs> for our purposes, this is a car. So anyways, it's going at 100 kilometers per hour which actually 100 kilometers per hour is 62, 62 miles per hour, which for you car people, that's why they have zero to 60 speed is because it's really zero to 100 kilometers per hour, the more you know. So anytime you have your cruise control set, so the car is going at a constant 
speed, so a constant velocity, and it's not changing, right? So since there's no change because you have the cruise control set, there's no acceleration, which will help us to understand the, how the velocity and acceleration graphs work together. So the velocity and the acceleration are pretty easy to understand together because they're directly related to some type of speed. So now going back to the velocity, so anytime that we're working on the lower side of the velocity bit here, that's the same thing as saying like, you know, the car is, the car is in reverse, okay? So I guess we can go back up here to my earlier demonstration with the better drawn vehicle. So anytime that velocity is on the underside of the zero, that's representative of some negative velocity. So something essentially going backwards. Now, so you'll see increases and decreases here in the, in the graph. And that simply means that, so let's say this is minus four, and let's just say we're working with miles per hour. So you've got your car here and you're backing out of the driveway. And so as you're doing that, you start out and you're going backwards, backwards. And then about this point is when you start, your velocity is slowing down. It's becoming slightly less negative, which means that you're applying the, applying the brakes until you get to this point here, which is stopped. So you've gone backwards and now you're slowing down as you get there. And then once you finally reach this spot here, you've stopped. And then from this point here is all a positive acceleration. So now that you've gone back and you're backed out of the driveway, you can begin your acceleration. So anytime that there's a change in velocity, there's also going to be a change in acceleration. So right here, you've gone from stop and then you're accelerating, so your velocity is increasing until you reach this point here. So let's say we reach a stoplight here. And so now we need to begin decelerating, so a velocity shift that is going to decrease our speed till we get to this point again, which is stopped, okay? So anytime that it's, it's on the top side of the graph, it's going forward, which is why the position shift here is becoming more positive or more forward. Now, like I said, so now we can kind of move down into the acceleration bit here. So like I noted, anytime that there's a change in velocity, by definition, there must be a change in acceleration. So, that's why in this part right here where our velocity is increasing, we'll also see that the acceleration is increasing as well. And then right at this point here, they might not be drawn out exactly the same, and they're not, but I tried my best to draw them as close as they are. Anytime, like I said, there's an asymptote or where it's reaching uh, a peak, um, either a peak or valley, so uh, a peak at the top or a valley at the bottom, that's going to say that the velocity is constant even if it's for just a very short amount of time. And so at that point, the acceleration must be zero. So I tried to draw them out right, they're kind of close. So acceleration is zero anytime you see a flat part in velocity. And that can be at a peak or at a crest or even if we continued this and said something like this for the velocity graph, that the velocity is constant here, so then by default, our acceleration must be zero. So now when we're dealing with acceleration, so this is a positive acceleration, and this is an ex and a decrease in positive acceleration. So I know that's a little bit confusing, but it is becoming and the car here is becoming slower, so its speed is decreasing, but it's still moving forward. And the acceleration, since there's a change from a, a high velocity to a low velocity, the acceleration is also going to decrease until it gets to the spot where the velocity is zero. So then at that same point, and this is really poorly drawn out, but anyways, the, um, the acceleration will also be zero. And so anytime we're looking down below here, so anytime we're working on the underside of the acceleration, 
under the zero here, this is an increase in negative acceleration. So it sounds a little bit confusing, but the speed at which it is going is increasing in the negative direction. So now this plot to here, we know that our acceleration is related to the speed. So we're now going backwards quickly. So now we're, like say we're backing out of the driveway, now we're hitting the gas and here. And then once we get to here, we've reached our maximal reverse. And then from then we start applying the brake again, but we're still going backwards and still having some type of negative acceleration because we're still going backwards until we get to this spot here at which we're stopped. So the main thing to note is anytime there's a crossing of zero in the acceleration, it means that velocity is going to be constant for that point in time. And anytime that there's a change in velocity, there must also be a change in acceleration. So those are some of the key points that um, that you should take home from this. And it'll probably help to watch this a few times and go over things because even as I talk about it now, I get a little bit confused by it. So a lot of people tend to have trouble with this stuff. So make sure you guys go over this as well. And then the last thing I wanna point out is the way to answer the questions for the test or anything else that Dr. Ricard might have. And so is this stuff right here. So when we're talking about solving these and putting the correct answer, you'll have choices like uh, horizontal slope, uh, very rapid increase, uh, very slow increase, steep up, steep down, constant velocity, positive, negative. So you'll have to choose from those terms to get the proper answer. So anytime that you're dealing with a question about the graph above, so let's say we're given the velocity graph and we're asked a question about the position graph. You'll want to use the terms increasing and decreasing. And so the same thing for acceleration. If we're given the acceleration graph and asked questions about the velocity graph, we would say that it's increasing or decreasing. But when you're given a graph and it's asking a question about the graph below it, you'd say positive or negative. So let's say we're given the velocity graph and asked a question about the acceleration, we're going to give our answers as positive or negative. And so those will be the ways that you'll answer the questions. And then that covers everything from the position, velocity, and acceleration graph. So hopefully that kind of clears it up for you guys. And I will see you guys next week.